Good morning. It is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, and it is Remembrance Sunday. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. God, our creator and redeemer, on this solemn Remembrance Sunday weekend, we are aware of how much war has cost the world you love. In spite of seemingly unceasing acrimony and fighting between nations and neighbors, you have come to us in Jesus Christ, carrying no sword and calling us to serve as peacemakers. In this time of worship, renew in us the hope that you will turn our swords into plowshares and lead the world from the study of war to the promise of peace with justice for all your peoples. Amen. And now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, as together we say, God of mercy, we confess that the world around us is in a sorry state. Countries turn arguments over territory into threats of terror. Old enemies stir up conflict within their tribes and nations. The threat of violence keeps us all on edge. Forgive us for not learning from past conflicts what leads to peace with justice. Forgive us when we want to settle our own disagreements by keeping conflict alive. Forgive us when we are often short-sighted, caring more about ourselves today than about future generations. Forgive us when in our selfishness we have harmed the planet and perpetuated division among nations and neighbors. Forgive us when we ignore the needs of those around us, especially when caring for them would require us to change our habits or our hearts. Forgive us, O oh God, and show us ways to transform our lives to reflect our commitment to Christ more fully. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Collect for this Sunday. Brighten your church, O God, with the promise of your kingdom and waken our hearts to its light. Bid us hasten with faith undimmed to greet the bridegroom's return and join the wedding feast. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Amos. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bit bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals and take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of the well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your song. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God the song of peace. In the days to come, 
The mountain of the house of the Lord shall tower as the highest of mountains and be raised above the hills. There shall all the nations flow. Many people shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, from Jerusalem, the word of the Lord. He shall judge between the nations and decide for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning knives. Nation shall not lift sword against nation, and they shall never train for war again. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Matthew. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, All of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of our Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I I love the reading from Amos today. I mean, Amos is giving people the business. I mean, here is this this poor farmer prophet from Judah, and and he goes to the northern kingdom of Israel, uh, the northern kingdom, which is wealthier and more fertile and uh, and is taking advantage of the peasants and the farmers in Judah. And uh, and he goes and he lays it on. And and the the folks in in Israel, are waiting for the day of the Lord because for them, the day of the Lord it is the day when God is going to trample all of their enemies and they are going to be sitting in the world's catbird seat. They just know it's going to happen. And, and, and Amos comes to them and says, listen, don't get so excited because when the day of the Lord comes, it's not going to be good for you. Uh, you you're the ones that, that are going to be judged. And then he lays it on them and, 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 He talks about their worship and listen to the words that he says talking about their worship. I hate, I despise your festivals. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Your offerings, I will not accept them. Your songs, your psalms, take them away from me. Take the noise away. I won't listen to your music. Stop it, stop it. It, It's wonderful. But you wonder, Uh, speaking for Yahweh, rejecting in totality the worship of the people. I mean, it was Yahweh who in Deuteronomy and Exodus and Leviticus said we need to have these festivals. So was Yahweh changing his mind? What's going on here? I want to suggest to you that the problem is not what goes on when they come together to worship. The problem is with the other six days of the week. 
in, in the bit that comes before our bit today. Uh, th this is what Amos says about the priests and, and the leaders of the kingdom of Israel. He says, they have turned justice into wormwood and have brought righteousness down into the ground. And, and then he goes on and says, they abhor the one who speaks the truth. They trample on the necks of the poor. They push the needy in the gate. The problem here is not that the people in Israel worship, not that they have festivals, but that because their lifestyle is so evil, because they have turned so far away from justice and doing good, their worship, their festivals are hypocrisy. Their religion has become a charade and Amos is calling them on it. But, but he doesn't leave them without hope. He, he says to them, seek good and, and not evil that you may live. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. And it may be, it may just be that the Lord will be gracious to the descendants of Joseph. And then he goes on, and, and this, is, this is magnificent. What an incredible image. He says, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. He is calling the people of Israel to throw themselves into the dynamic, life-changing, soul-cleansing water and come out as people who remember to care for the widows and for the orphans and for the aliens. He is calling on them in this passage to remember, to remember, to remember who they are and what they were called to be a people committed to justice and peace, a people whose purpose was to bring healing to a broken world. Remember, remember, remember. Uh, Amos had a contemporary, uh, the prophet Micah, and uh, Micah made, made it plain that it wasn't just the kingdom of Israel in the north that was a problem. Uh, Judah was not so great either. And, and, and listen, listen to what Micah said about Judah, talking about, again, the priests and, and, and the politicians and the leaders. Hear this, you rulers of the house of Jacob and chiefs of the house of Israel who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with wrong. Its rulers give judgment for a bribe. Its priests teach for a price. Its prophets give oracles for money. And yet they say, surely the Lord is with us. That's pretty harsh. It's pretty harsh. But again, the prophet Micah does not leave the people without hope, but calls them to remember, to remember, to remember calls them to be a people who pursue justice because justice is the only way. Calls them to be a people who pursue living in right relationships with their neighbor and with neighboring countries. It's the only way. And, and listen to what Micah says in these words. Um, he quotes the prophet Isaiah and says, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. The mountain of the Lord is Jerusalem and, and the place where the temple is. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion, out of Jerusalem, shall come instruction, shall come the Torah for all nations. And he shall be the one who arbitrates between people and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. And then what will happen? They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, 
neither shall they learn war anymore. You see, what Mike is saying to them is, listen, when you live with justice and righteousness, when people's needs are being met, when people are being treated with respect, when, when different religions are being treated with respect and, and they don't have to fight with one another, when there's no attempt to convert one another, then, then there's no need for war. Then there's no need to defend yourself. Then there's no impetus for terrorism or acts of terror. Live with justice and righteousness and sow the grounds for peace and disarmament. Remember, remember, remember. Well, I think those are, are important words for us today. As we gather in churches across this country and in so many countries of the world, to remember those who lost their lives in the First and Second World Wars. And in churches around the world, names will be read and there will be silence. And that's good. And that's appropriate because every name that is read in every church is someone's father, someone's son, someone's brother. And the communities like ours were changed forever because of the loss of life. It's important that we remember them, but it's not enough. It's not enough. We need to remember on this day, the unimaginable cost that has been borne by the nations of this world. We need to remember not just those from our parish churches who died. We need to remember the millions of lives that were lost. We need to remember the millions of families whose lives were altered forever. We need to remember the scars, emotional and physical, that have been borne by so many. We could go back in history, but just going back to the last century, we need to remember the First World War, the Second World War, the Korean War, the war in Vietnam, all of the ethnic cleansing that has happened in Africa, the unending wars in the Middle East. We need to remember the acts of terrorism which continue to happen to this day. We need to remember, remember, remember what happens when we do not pursue peace, when we do not pursue justice, when we do not pursue righteousness because the cost is horrific. But we need to do more than just remember. We need to look around. We need to look at our towns, at our cities, at our provinces, our states, at our countries, and at the world. We need to look at a world in which the gap between rich and poor is becoming larger constantly. We need to look at the reality that in our cities, in our provinces, in our countries, there are more and more people living on the street. There are more and more people who are living with drug addictions. There are more and more people who are victims of mental health issues with no place to live. We need to look and see that the way we deal with the poor and the disenfranchised and the marginalized is causing extraordinary pain throughout this country, throughout the world. We need to look around and ask ourselves the question on this day, what would, what would the prophet Amos say to us today? What would Isaiah say to us today? What would Micah say to us today? What would Yahweh say to us today. I suspect we would hear words like, seek justice and turn away from evil. Seek God and live. Pursue justice. Let justice roll down 
like thundering waters, like thundering waters, and let righteousness flow like those ever-flowing streams. For the sake of our children, for the sake of our children's children, for the sake of the world, we need to remember, 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 this day says to us year after year, lest we forget. When we forget, we perpetuate war and violence and human suffering. Let us do our part. Let us do our part to create a world where swords are turned into plowshares and spears are turned into pruning hooks. For the love of God, for the love of our world, for our children, and for our children's children. Amen. We say together, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God of each life and all lives, in every generation, you have been present with your people. In times of poverty and prosperity, in times of sorrow and joy, in times of health and pandemic, in times of war and peace. On this day, we remember your gracious care in times of crisis and give thanks for the courage and sacrifice of the women and men of many nations who fought and died in the two world wars. And all those since who have worked for peace and justice and who offer protection in so many different times and places. 
We pray for the safety of those currently serving and support for those who have finished their time of service and now face challenges in civilian life. At St. George's today, we name those of this parish who died in the world wars and acknowledge that many may remember others that they hold dear in their hearts. The honor roll for World War I. Private George Brooks. Private Thomas Burdett. Corporal Harold Campbell. Sar Sergeant Major Samuel Courtney. Private Charles Gleed. Private George Gleed. Private Bernard Gollop. Cadet Samuel Beatty Johnson. Sergeant Frederick Kellen. Private Frederick Livermore. Private George Martin. Private H. Errol Platt. Private Edward Snelling. Private Lawrence Stevenson. And the honor roll for World War II. Private Arthur Burt. Pilot Fred Crawley. Private Winfred Doucette. Squadron Leader Victor Fenwick. Flying Officer Robert Hardy. Private David Jeffrey. Private William Lee. Warden Officer Stanley Martin. Aircraftsman Dougal Forbes. Lieutenant Clayton Mitchell. Lance Corporal Matthew Mizzen. Lance Sergeant Alan Saunders. Flight Lieutenant Sinclair Soper. Pilot Officer Floyd Steeles. Warden Officer Class 2 Leslie Innes Tim Whitlock. Private Robert Wright. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. God of promise and peace, we thank you for the places where conflicts have ended, peace has been restored, and where citizens can enjoy secure freedoms and human rights. In those places where people remain oppressed and dissent is restricted, encourage, we pray, those who witness and work for justice to be established. God of mercy, Hear our prayer. God of wholeness and hope, we thank you for all those called to serve others in their home communities, wherever they call home. Especially we give thanks for those of our community working hard in the face of COVID-19. May they know your protection and show your love in all they do. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. God of commitment and courage, we thank you for the many organizations working to bring hope to people facing social exclusion, discrimination or exploitation. Inspire the leaders of our communities to provide access to the support so desperately needed for individuals and families to survive and to thrive. May all your beloved children enjoy the life you desire for them. God of mercy. Here Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. 
hold fast to what is good. Return to no one, evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve your God rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.